Hello, everybody, and welcome to an opposition preview with a man you've probably seen before. You probably recognise to some extent. It's Leicester City fan Lee Chappie. Lee, how are you, sir? Um, I'm absolutely tated. I'm not going to lie, but I'm I'm looking forward to this good chat. I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the match in general. I mean, Leicester, from the outside at least, have seen like they've been on this sort of quite steady rising path from after the obviously the incredible title win. Um, yes. And then last season, fifth, FA Cup win, all that. But this season may be stalled a little bit. From the inside, what has been the sort of diagnosis this season? Um, 2020, we lost our head physio, who'd been with a club for 20 years, called Dave Rennie. Hmm. He left and was replaced. And ever since that moment, I feel like we've not stopped having injuries. Hmm. The injuries that we have had impacting our club since 2020, since the COVID era of football, is dis disgusting. Hmm. Um, and yet again, for this fixture, I've got no Jamie Vardy. You know, the key, key man out. You've got a return to Ricardo Pereira from an ACL and another injury that he, he caught on. You know, James Justin, another player that's returned from an ACL. These players, you don't know how fit they're going to be. An ACL can ruin a, a player's career. Look at Michael Owen had numerous injuries. He was going to turn out to be an amazing striker for Liverpool. And he was, still was a great striker, but I think he was going to be, you know, elite, elite. Yeah. Uh, injuries can ruin players. And, and I think we've had a... a Fair few of them, to be honest. Hmm. I mean, that was one of the things I was looking at over the last sort of couple of weeks with Leicester. Um, obviously, last season, you, like you say, you had a lot of injuries yeah. as well. And, and when I looked at the lineups uh, for your match just gone, I was like, flipping hell, half the team's <laughs> missing, it feels it's, like. It's ridiculous, mate. It really is. Um, the only player that's really in form at the minute is, is James Madison. Uh, the rest of the team seem to be really struggling. Um, obviously, you must have seen the news about Yuri Tienemans. I mean, we all knew we weren't going to put pen to paper because you could sort of get that from his attitude as well this year. He's just been way off the pace, way off the pace. Since he won the FA Cup final um, and got that goal, he's just been off the pace. Looks like he's ready to pack his bags and go, which is fair enough, you know. Um, I'd rather have someone to do that than to someone put pen to paper, get a bigger contract, bigger money, and then not play great. And then you can't sell the play either and you're stuck with this massive yeah. wage bill. I, I respect him for not doing that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if there's if there's one team he knows about paying over the odds for wages for a long period of time, it's West Ham. We've got many, many of them. I mean, <laughs> so when we look at this season then, I mean, the other big news is is Brendan Rodgers. Like, yeah. there's, there's obviously a lot of talk stories around him. The Man United links are coming back out again. Is that someone who you think, first of all, how do you think that will play out? I think it's quite harsh on Brendan Rodgers, the whole thing that's going on on Twitter and everywhere at the moment with Rodgers yeah. out and all this. I think it's quite harsh because at the end of the day, the start of this season, for Fafana, pre-season, leg break. We were winning 3-0 mm. in a, in a pre-season. There was no need for that tackle. Mm. Snapped his leg. He's done for until I think he'll be back probably maybe in a couple of weeks. I think we've seen him training, but I mean, that's been a long time. Yeah. You know, first of all, you lose him. You've got Johnny Evans, who's injury prone now. I think his age is finally caught with him with injuries. He's got yeah. constant foot and ankle problems. Then we're playing Ndidi at centre back. You know, he's not centre back. Mm. <laughs> the list goes on. I don't think yeah. it's fair to call out Rogers for, for this season. He's been very unfortunate. Yes, he has made some strange substitutions at times. He's gone with a back three or a back five when we don't play very well in, in with that formation. Yes, he has made some weird decisions like made Yuri Tienemann's captain against Nottingham Forest, who didn't turn up. Mm. Uh, a man that's leaving, make him captain. I don't know. You know, there is a few weird decisions, but all managers make a few weird decisions. But I think it is harsh on him as as a coach to be sort of ridiculed and Rogers out. I think it is a bit harsh. Do you think he'll stay beyond this season? Look at it this way. Leicester, the brand is called the King Power. It's duty free. It's a duty free brand, right? <laughs> look at look at COVID, right? That's affected the brand. It's affected the money coming in. Yeah. The money isn't there. Mm. Are you really going to pay Rogers off to let him go out the door? No, you're not. Realistically, you're not going to because they haven't got the money to waste. Mm. Sometimes people don't look at these things. They just think, yeah, Rogers out, Rogers out. But they don't really think about the, the ins and outs of the amount of money that's involved in these transactions of going in and out. Mm. You know, I don't think he's going out until at least 
the summer. Very minimal. So then look, it's looking towards the rest of the season, do you think you have enough either in the managerial department, in the player department to turn around what has been, at least by Leicester City's recent standards, a disappointing time? Um, it all, I think it, it's all down on to players returning. Like Castagna looks like yeah. he's finally going to be coming back soon. Um, we've got to focus on Jamie Vardy getting back. Um, it, I, I, we've been saying it for, what, four years? He's only got two years left. He's only got two years left. I still think he's got two years left. Mm. Um, and he's still a great striker. He's probably lost a touch of pace now. Um, he has got that, that protege of Dhaka learning mm. from him. Mm. But... I think it, it's all down to, to players' fitnesses from injuries. That's the simple fact is is the injuries that are going to affect our season. End of discussion. There's nothing else. We've got the talent. We're, we've shown that we we can compete. You boys are, are doing the same sort of thing as we are. You are competing with the, the top six end of the table at times. You've had a little dip here and there recent yeah. times, but yeah. but you have. And you know, and I'm I'm up for that. I'm I'm Fair play to you boys, you know. I can't stand the fact that there's a big six in yeah. the Premier League. I hate it. I despise it. You know, there's another 14 teams in the, in the Premier League. Hello, mm -hmm. we're here. <laughs> you know, it pisses me, it pisses me off. Yeah. Pisses me off. I mean, as we we call them on this channel, the Sky Sports Top Six. Do you know what I mean? They're they're yeah. there and thereabouts. Everything is about them. Even when you have, even in the times where you're not facing one of them and you are on the television, they'll still be talking about them yeah. somehow. It feels that yeah. way. All it is. of the time, and it's one of those it things is. I think every fan of clubs of our level and any level in the Premier League that isn't one of them gets very, very frustrated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and just remember that the Premier League, the, the, the Sky and stuff like that, they aren't loyal to any of these clubs, though. If something was to happen to say, I'm just making this up, something happened to Tottenham and they went into a serious crisis and went down into Division One, Division Two, just like Leeds and stuff did, yeah. they they will just move on to the next biggest club in the league and call them the big. There's no loyalty by these media. Giants, I tell you that, and that, yeah. to be honest with you, there's no loyalty to to the, the actual Premier League by these big six teams because they all wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The slippery six, they all try to run away. So and the fans have forgot it. The fans have forgot it already. Frustratingly, very frustratingly, that everyone just sort of has moved a little bit on from that. Where you're like, I was watching some thing yesterday where they, they were recapping like 2021, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, they really did try to do that, didn't they? They, they really did. did. They gave they it really their did. best shot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know up to them teams <laughs> but so at the same time i've got some friends that support those sides that are like against it too so it's not just yeah, this, course, yeah. you know it's more the people in charge at those clubs than it is yeah yeah, the, yeah. The fans a lot of the fans were like like again like you say i grew up in north london so a lot of my friends are arsenal and tottenham fans so yeah a lot of them are against it as well but then so then for leicester city then what is the game that what is the old goal this season what is the eventual goal I think there's no choice now. We've, now we've we're out of the FA Cup on a. I don't want to talk about that fixture. Let's just say we're out of the yeah. FA Cup um, because that that was one way back into Europe. Because I don't think top six mm -hmm. is even remotely anywhere near. We're, we're nearer to the bottom six than we are top six. Put it that way. Um, Conference League is a chance to get back into Europa. I can't stand. The, I, I can't stand the idea of Conference League. I think the prestige sure. of European football has mm. been deteriorated with having another shitty competition that no one's interested in because mm. you don't you don't even watch Europa if you're not in it do you be honest be honest you're not wrong you don't wrong. you guys that are watching this you don't do you you watch the Champions League because it's the elite level of European club competition but you don't watch Europa unless you really have to because your side's in it what about the conference league that's a joke it's a joke I tell mean, me tell me I'm wrong I mean, we watched the results to see Tottenham go out of it, and apart from that, though, that was basically yeah. that was basically what it yeah. felt like. Most of the country's interest in the Conference League in general. Knowing Leicester, we'll probably end up winning that, and we'll be bantered for it for the rest of our days because you've won a Mickey Mouse European Cup. But if it's a route to get into Europa football again for next season, and that's our only route, then I suppose we're going to have to take it. But mm. I don't like the Conference League at all. But that's the game. That's that. There you go. That's that's our game. I think it's Conference League. So you've said some positive things about West Ham. What is your sort of, uh, what's your overview of West Ham at the moment? Antonio, I, I love the guy. I, I mean, I don't watch West Ham like you do for 90 minutes straight, but I've probably three years now, I, people that have watched my channel and seen me call games and stuff will, will know my love for Antonio. I think he would have been amazing to partnership with someone like Jamie Vardy. Mm. A big one and a small one together as a two would have been outstanding, but we never went for him and you guys... Phew, 
I lo- I love Antonio. He's he's my, he's the reason why I would watch West Ham. To be honest, I do, and similar career trajectory to Jamie Vardy as well. Of course, coming yeah. from, you know, from non-league all the way up to Premier League yeah. and and somehow against all the. I remember after your title winning season, for example, we were linked with Jamie Vardy for a, for a brief for a hot second. Yes. and the conversation was, do we really want someone who's kind of looks <laughs> like they might be over it sort of thing? And just. <laughs> continue to perform forever and antonio sort of the same every season it felt like someone going and to be fair look i'll be real with you most people who watch this channel know it's me most of the time saying bad things about michael antonio but like he continues to prove me wrong he's a beast um, mate he's a beast incredible what about what other players is there any is there anyone else you would look at and think you would love to have them in either this leicester city side or just leicester city in general? i mean obviously we'd all take rice in a heartbeat i the think every, almost almost every side in the Premier League would take him. Um so, I'm gonna look now I'm not gonna mention Zuma because of what's gone on. Uh Benarama. I mean, Benarama was a Benarama was from Brentford. You know, we was looking at him at one point as well. I think a lot of clubs were. And I don't know how that's worked out for you boys to be honest with you. Because like I say I don't watch full 90 minutes of West Ham. So I wouldn't be able to you know you can watch the highlights of match of the day you'll never get the full flavour of what's gone on in, in a game. Mm. So I don't know Nick, how he's I would, uh, mixed is probably the way to word it. There's some games where he's unplayable and you're like, holy crap, there's the guy that everyone saw at Brentford in the championship and everything else. And then there's some games where he just can't get into it. Um, last couple of games, for example, you, you look at it and sometimes it's not even his fault of his own, but sometimes you're just like, you just ain't, it ain't missing. It's just missing, it. just missing. Yeah. yeah but yeah. you can see if the talents on the talents, very clear for all this. When you watch him, you're like, he's clearly incredible. Like, Outside of maybe Andre Yarmolenko, he's the one player I would have 100% confidence hitting the target from outside the area every time. Yes. We don't have many like that. And he's he's very capable of doing that, to be fair. But mixed is probably a fair description of him. Yeah, well, when we was linked with him, I thought, ah, here we go. We're going to finally get that Mares replacement. He's not mm-hmm. that, is he? He's not that. <laughs> he's not. No, no. He's not. Um, we're, we're still looking for that Mares replacement on that right side, I think. We're still looking. We've got this little fantastic lad now, Lookman, as you know. Um yeah. He, he, again, though, he's he's a little, um, sometimes he's just a little bit inconsistent, mm-hmm. but he is starting to gel. But I he's, definitely... he's, he's one of those people who I look at as having the raw talent. It's just about finding, like you say, consistency is the one thing I think that misses from his game. He's got, he's incredibly fast. I think he's good on the ball. He's surprisingly good at finishing. And I think to be fair, the, the fact he's gone to clubs like, uh, Red Bull have shown that actually, yes, it's not just it's not just the eye test. Actually, people do think he has legitimate promise. It's just about finding a way to extract that from him. And I, I, to be fair, I felt like he's probably him and Leicester were probably a match sort of semi main heaven in that sense. Well, I felt I, like, I, yeah, I think I, I think he's just. Um, I'm sure I read that this morning that he's changed the nationality. He's gone to Nigeria international football. The FA have mm. have agreed it. I don't know. If that's true or not, I've not had a chance to look. I know I'm a Leicester fan. I should be looking at everything. But guess what? There's there's not enough time in a day sometimes to check everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that will that'll sit well with him as well. Obviously, Vendidi in there as well. Mm-hmm. The big thing I'm worried about overall, though, boys, is at the end of the season, where we finish and then mm-hmm. what happens to our players. Because just like... All the other teams in that 14 outside the big six, we're just cannon fodder to be just picked apart by these big boys with lots of money. Yeah. And because that's all they see is, is money, don't they? These players now. There's no there's no commitment, there's no loyalty. There's mm. not many players that are loyal. There's a few see what, see what you need to do is what we've done, right? So Jared Bowen been incredible this season. Best player we've had this season, probably apart from Rice, and even then, some people say maybe better than Rice, right? What we've done is we've got a really famous guy to have his daughter like they're now together. He's with Danny Dyer now. Now he's locked in. There you go. So not contractually, just you know, he's tied but down. That's part do. of the contract. It's part of the contract, though, isn't it? In that's a way. Got, that's what got. <laughs> and you don't want to piss off Danny Dyer. You exactly. know what I mean? Scary man. I've watched EastEnders. I've watched EastEnders. <laughs> um, so how do you see Sunday going then? How do you see it? What do you what do you think is gonna happen in the game? We we put up a better performance against Liverpool midweek than we did against them other red team in the East Midlands. <laughs> um, we just didn't, we still don't look like we're creating much. Yes, it was Liverpool. Yes, it was at Anfield. We did defend our arts, arses off and Casper saved us from point going down about 5-0. But 
something's got to change. It's at the King Power. You boys have come down here and gave us a right good roasting a couple of years ago. I think it was like 4-0 or something silly. Mm. I don't fancy it. I'll be honest with you. Again, another game I don't fancy. To be honest with you, I've looked at the fixtures. I'm thinking, where are Leicester's points coming from? We've got mm. you boys. We've got a postponed game with Chelsea. We've got Arsenal. We've got a tough one with Burnley. We've got a tough one with Brentford. Man United, I think I've just mentioned. It's just silly. Um and if we don't do something soon, we are going to be in trouble. I'm going to go for a draw. I'm going to, I'm going to go for a draw. A tough, tough fought draw. If I was going to put score draw, if I was to push you on it, yeah, I'd, I'd go one one. Okay. And I think okay, I'd, I take mean... it. I'd, I'd take it. I'd take it. On our current form, I'd take it. Well, I don't think we've had. I've had five wins since Oct. Since since October seventeenth, I think was our last win actually. That's, I can't, that's I can't pretty remember. poor. Let's have a look. Let's just have a look. That's pretty poor. I'll say this while you do that. I'll say this. I, for looking at it from a West Ham perspective, um, I think there's an argument to be said that this is the right time to face Leicester. Um, but I also think if you look at it from a Leicester perspective, it's probably arguably the right time to face West Ham. We're not fit and firing on all cylinders like we have been earlier on in the season. Um, we're sort of grinding out wins, but we're not looking particularly great while doing it. And so yeah. I think when you say a score draw, I mean... It sounds plausible. Even if you're saying you hope for it, I think it does actually sound quite plausible. So so when I said that date at the 27th, I don't know why it sat in my head, but that's when we won uh, on a penalty shootout against Brighton in the League Cup. Since mm. then, we've lost to Arsenal. Uh, got We drew with Sparta, Sparta at Moscow and got put out there. Drew with Leeds. Got battered by Chelsea 3-0. Um, we won against Watford. So there's one win since October. Draw Southampton. Lost to Villa. Beat Newcastle, lost to Man City, beat Liverpool, three wins. Oh, yeah, of course. Watford that. in the FA Cup, got beat by Spurs. So we've got four wins since October the 27th, basically. <laughs> That's bad. And one of them's in the FA Cup as well, so in the league, it's three. That's bad form, isn't it? It's not so great. You, it's not sure, great. Surely you, gotta be, you guys got to be rubbing your hands thinking there's some points here. Like I say, I think it is the it is looking at it and saying it's the right time and potentially the right team to face. I mean, that's the other thing as well. Brendan Rogers plays a style of football that suits David Moyes. Mm. David Moyes is going to want to sit up, set up his shops, wait for you and then counterattack. Yeah. And Brendan Rogers isn't a guy who's going to go, do you know what? Let's defend <laughs> for it. Like he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna try and take it. So in that sense, I think it does feel like the right opposition. But again, we just like what you just said there about we're not creating enough, this, that, and the other you could say a lot of the same things about West Ham right now. The one difference is we're grinding out these wins. Um, yeah. Even if it is last second against Kidderminster, even if it is uh, not a very exciting uh, game against Watford, we are grinding out the wins. And so we have to have, like you say, not rubbing the hands together potentially that much, but at least some hope that we can go on and, and make something happen in this game and that uh, our players will come back into form. Um, yeah. But any yeah. final any final words? And let the people know as well where they can find you on YouTube and everywhere else. Yeah, of course. I mean, you've just hit 15K, so I've been working at that for quite a while now. Um, for some reason, my tic- for some reason, cheers. For some reason, my TikTok's gone flying into 20K in, in, within two months, and I've been working on this for three years. Don't make sense. This social stuff don't make sense. But you can find me on every platform. I'm uh, Lee underscore Chappie on every platform. Um, I do Leicester watch alongs. I do the odd few neutral stuff as well. I'm going to try and turn it into more of a neutral based channel. But in the meantime, I am covering the Foxes. Other than that, I've got nothing really to say apart from I don't know where the next points are coming from for Leicester. I'm really worried. There you go. If you want to find out where those points are coming, make sure to head over to these channels. Subscribe comes highly recommended from Hamish Chat. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification so you miss, uh, so you don't miss any of our stuff. We'll be having a watch along with that sort of nonsense as well. Just you know, what? it's like football videos, man. They just they don't stop, do they? they yes. just, it just goes and goes and goes and goes. And hit the like button while you're there. But uh, come on, your answer. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll speak to you soon. See you later. See ya.